Hey everyone, Kathy the Vegan Prepper here, and today I'm going to be bringing you my foolproof white bread recipe, and hopefully you enjoy. Do 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 vegan prepper. The recipe that I'm sharing with you today, like I said, it is a white bread recipe. It's not whole foods plant-based by any means. <laughs> it's also got oil in it, but if you're like me and you're kind of prepping minded, you likely have a nice stock of all-purpose flour on hand and maybe occasionally you need to go through it, use it up, um, or you need a good recipe to do <laughs> with your all-purpose flour in case you need it. So that's where we're starting today. I, I'm going to be doing a few more breads. I already have a sourdough video on the channel and I actually don't even do my sourdough that way anymore, but it worked for a long time and it still works. Uh, but we're gonna be talking a little bit about yeasted breads on the channel too, because I think this is a great place to get started, especially if you have yourself a bread maker. Now I picked mine up used for about $20 on Facebook Marketplace. As far as I have seen, used bread makers are very easy to come by. And so you can just sort of drastically increase your own kind of sufficiency in your kitchen, making things from scratch, um, like any anything on this earth that requires like a dough cycle, say a pretzel or a cinnamon roll, things like that. Like you might not eat them all of the time, but it's really handy to be able to have something that will take care of that, that dough cycle for you, especially when you're busy. And um, while it's very good to obviously know how to do the kneading and the cycle of dough yourself, you don't have to be so hardcore that you do it every single time, right? Like, cause we're not cooking our finished baked good we're, or we're not baking it over a fire, right? In like a cast iron Dutch oven um, every time either. Like you're using the convenience of your oven at home so you can use the convenience <laughs> while you have it of the bread machine at home. Preppers are so funny. They're like, they're so hardcore about so much, right? Anyway, sorry, that, that's a tangent, but let's go ahead and actually show you the recipe itself. Um, we're doing, like, I'm gonna just show you in real time so that you can see how fast it is. Now I did gather my ingredients, but I also spent a lot of time jaw jacking at you. So I normally don't do that. And honestly, I was talking longer than it takes to get all of this stuff together very simple recipe. Um, it is designed for a bread machine, but I have done it without the bread machine and it still works really well. I'm going to put the proportions down in the description box below for a one pound, one and a half pound loaf and for a two pound loaf. Um, and so this is going to be for the two pound loaf, which I actually split and turn into two one pound loaves, we will see in just a second. But yeah, let's go ahead and actually actually start. Um, and so like I said, I'm using just all purpose flour. It's organic, um, just from my stock. And you start off with a cup and a half of warm water. Honestly, for me, I think the warmer, the better. If I have my way, I, I let the kettle, because I have an electric kettle that shows me the temperature, I let the kettle hit about 112 degrees, which I know 110, 112. A lot of people say that's too hot, but for me, by the time it gets poured into the measuring cup and then poured into the bread maker and then all the ingredients get added on top, the water temperature decreases dramatically. I find the best success with my loaves, um, at least the way that I do it, when I'm using warmer water. And so that's what I do. But basically it's just like, it's warm. They tell you, oh, you shouldn't even feel it on your skin. Like it should be perfect, you know, body temperature, bath temperature. I don't think that's true. I like for it to feel more like a jacuzzi, if that makes sense. <laughs> like just stick your hand in and it's like, oh yeah, that's nice and warm. And then, you know, that that's how you know. Um, otherwise, before I did, the kettle trick where I was looking at the temperature exactly. I used to just boil water in my kettle that didn't like the old fashioned kind that just sits on the stove. Um, and I would just sort of mix with the bottled water, like, you know, the filtered water out of my Berkey until I got it to that temperature. <laughs> so it's a little bit of a back and forth thing. Anyway, man, I am able to talk about a lot of things. Like I can talk forever about anything. Sorry, you guys. Um, so the next ingredient is two tablespoons of oil. This is not real time at all, is it? But it's still really fast. So I just have a eighth cup measurer and that's what I do. Just eighth cup is two tablespoons for anybody who doesn't know. 16 tablespoons in a cup. All right, um, two teaspoons of salt. Now you can definitely cut this back if you want to. 
Um, when I add whole grain, I do like a scant two teaspoons of salt. When you um, add whole grain to the recipe, it will not rise as much. And so you're gonna end up with like less bread in, you know, less bread. Actually, sometimes depending on how much of my home ground flour I add to this recipe, I will cut the salt completely in half, um, sometimes even more because I end up with just one kind of dense loaf. It's much smaller rather than two lofty loaves. And so adjust accordingly, but we'll talk about that later. Oh no, the yeast is not next. <laughs> We're doing the flour now. So people have differences in the way that they do their flour. I like to sort of scoop loosely. I don't know if you can see that it's not like fully full. And then I kind of, I even it out with what's there. So maybe I'm getting a little less flour than some people, but we're doing four cups of flour. So again, I'm kind of scooping so the cup is not 100% full. And then I kind of do this. I don't like scoop it in and level, but anyway, obviously it would be nice, I guess, if I would just weigh it. So maybe that's what I should do. I should weigh this one time so that I can give you actual, like accurate measurements. But anyway, four cups, all purpose flour. I'm just gonna sort of sit that over here. And then the yeast, I'm gonna go ahead and move this to the side a little bit. Not too much though. I don't like putting the flour on the side like they often tell you to in bread machine recipes. This is going very well. Anyway, like they tell you in <laughs> bread machine recipes, a lot of times to like make a divot to put your yeast in, probably if you're gonna let it sit and you're not going to start the bread machine right away. For me personally, why does it matter if the yeast hits the water? Because like I'm gonna do it right away. So I don't do this, you know, fancy thing in the middle. Also because I find that as the bread, as the flour travels up the side, oftentimes you'll just end up with flour stuck in the corners of the bread machine. And so it's better to sort of leave it more flat at least in my experience. Um, so the yeast is gonna be two and a half teaspoons of yeast. I actually usually just use two, that, but that's what the math was, two and a half heaping teaspoons, but whatever. Um, my yeast is in this container because I buy it in bulk on Azure Standard. I buy like two pounds at a time and it lives in my fridge. Um, and so that is the cheapest way that I found to buy yeast, is to buy it in bulk. So if anybody didn't know that you can buy yeast in bulk, you can buy yeast in bulk. All right, so that's it, that's everything. And I'm going to get it into my bread machine, close it. This is where the cheating begins. We just do, <laughs> it's amazing. We just do, um, let me see, where are we? Menu, where are you, right here. Normally this lives in a different spot. So I'm getting mine to the dough cycle, which is telling me right here, it's the number nine. So I have to get to the number nine. It's gonna take an hour and a half. And then you start it and there it goes. In an hour and a half, I will have an absolutely perfect and beautiful finished bread dough. And I'll show you what I do to shape the loaves and then get them into the oven. Okay, so it's finished and I actually have to go pick up my daughter. So hopefully this goes really well in just one take, but the dough is totally done. I don't know if you can see, it's actually kind of touching <laughs> the top of the uh the lid and it only just went off so i haven't like left this sitting here for too long basically um shortly or like right after i turned off the camera last time i came over here and i washed my counter with a little bit of castile soap and water and then just you know did a rinse and then it's been drying so it's totally clean and dry and ready to go now that i'm getting ready to do this step and then i also pre-oiled my bread pans and so i do just like a dime-sized dollop of olive oil and I just oil the whole thing and that is how I do this particular bread so the bread itself has oil in it so at this point I don't have to worry about avoiding oil um, if you were truly avoiding oil with an oil-free recipe obviously you would use parchment but anyway I'm gonna open this up it's beautiful and you can see it's like a little brain coming out of the top of the <laughs> the thing here it's kind of kind of dramatic actually it's like <laughs> anyway uh but yes yeah, so i'm gonna go ahead and dump this out so i have basically never used my bread maker to bake i say that 
I mean, obviously I've done it before, but um, basically I don't like the fact because the, the paddle is always in there. And so I don't like the fact that you kind of lose, you know, a good two inches of bread um, just from the paddle being in there. And then we've already replaced that paddle once because we had a person in the house who shall not be named because I'm not into like shaming people when they make mistakes, but somebody in the house didn't realize that there was the, the paddle in there and they went to slice like the bottom of the bread and just cut right through that um, paddle and just totally scuffed up the the paddle itself like there's there's like a coating on like a nonstick coating i guess and so i just didn't like the idea of that being in my bread or like flex of it getting when it was mixing and so i just already have replaced this once <laughs> so it's like we just don't bake in it anymore um and it's, it's just a universal bread machine paddle so they are replaceable which is nice and so it wasn't that big of a deal actually that was like 15 dollars, so that cost me almost as much as the entire bread machine anyway like I said, I need to be quick. There's just no hope. I'm hopeless, okay? All right, so basically I cut it, you know, I fold it in half or split it in half, and then it sort of folds in half, split it, and I just do a very simple kind of thirds fold, and then like I do thirds again, and I'm sure that there's, you know, some real science behind the shaping and all of that, but. I just, it's just not my thing. Like I just don't do that. And then what I do is I take that folded bit and I just sort of make it until it is about the size of the length of my bread pan. And I do a little pinch at the end of there, squash it and sort of tuck it under. And then I'm trying to see if you can see. Guess not. All right, here we go. So the little squashed flap, I sort of tuck under, and then that just goes right into my little bread pan. And so you'll see it's little. I'm gonna do the other one the exact same way. Probably won't even need more flour. Like I said, these doughs are just, I don't know, just kind of perfect. That might be a little too much right there though. Um, and then, so thirds, thirds again. Roll it until it's the right length. And then also I aim to get the seam side uh, on the bottom. <laughs> I had a little nightmare moment where I was like, did I forget to record? <laughs> oh my gosh. Like I always worry when I'm doing things like this where it's not like I have, I can just do another shot because we already did it. So if I forgot something, it's just, it's, it's, it's scrap basically right like this is trash now until I make bread again so close to the same length did the same thing squash the ends tuck the flap a little it looks like that one's bigger one of them is always bigger if I just would weigh it obviously it would be um like it would be um you know more precise but I just I just don't um and so We've got two loaves here, one very obviously bigger than the other, <laughs> but it's going to make two really nice little loaves of bread. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just sort of quickly brush this off to the side because normally I'd like clean it up and I will clean it up, but just to keep the video moving, like I said, I have to leave. Um, I just have this bag and it's like from Costco. Oh, from Sandwich Thins. I bought some Sandwich Thins and this bread is, or this bag is kind of the perfect size for um, letting my dough rise. So I just sort of stick this in here. They have to go kind of at an angle. And then rising inside of plastic has been the best like I get the best results that way. I wish that you could get really good results just with like, I don't know, a cloth or whatever. But ever since I started putting my little bread pans inside of something plastic, I get so much more rise. And so hopefully within 30, well, within 30 to 40 minutes, we're going to see this probably double in size. And hopefully I will be back home from picking up my daughter by that point. Um, and yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. 
And I also will, I normally preheat my oven at this point, but because I'm leaving, I'm not gonna preheat it. I'm just gonna turn it on as soon as we get home. So set these aside. You can see what they look like right now. And we'll see them when we come back and they're ready to go in the oven. All right, here we are. We're back home um, and it already, gosh, this is touching. Let's try to be gentle so that it doesn't deflate it. These out. They are already at least double in size, if not double in size, if not more. Um, so hopefully they're not over risen. Um, but the way that you check is um, you push your finger in gently. If the divot remains complete, just remains where you stick your finger, uh, it's a little over risen. If it bounces back just slightly, but you can still see a little bit of the divot then it's perfect. If it just bounces back completely and you can't tell that you ever put your finger in at all, not in, I'll show you in a second, then that means it's not quite risen enough. So that's what you're looking for. But here, let me stick my finger in. It's very gentle oh, and it, it came back just a little and it's still there. I don't know how well you guys can even see that. So it did come back a little bit. So this is perfect. It's ready to get put into the oven. Unfortunately, my oven is not hot yet. <laughs> so basically I cook these at 425 for anywhere, like usually about 40, 45 minutes. Um, but what I do is I preheat my oven to 450. Um, once the oven is preheated to 450, I open the door, I get these in, and then I'll reduce the temperature to 425 and leave them in there for about 45 minutes. Um, and so I'm still going to go ahead and basically go through that process. Hopefully the oven will heat pretty soon. Another thing I like to do is sprinkle a little extra water on these, uh, just to sort of give some more moisture. But I find that as you can see how, how wet the inside of the bag is, um, they end up with a lot of moisture just from rising inside of the plastic. So yeah, I'll turn this inside out and wash it out and get it ready for the next time I use it. I just, just rinse it. Um, and then yeah, we'll just come back when these are all baked. All right. I just got these out of the oven. They may have gotten a little bit overdone. Um, but this is the larger one. So I just basically like to pop the bread out. And gosh, I don't know what that was. It got too much oil on that spot or something. You can kind of see like where those little ends got folded down. <laughs> but there it is. Actually, now I'm looking, that doesn't look overdone. That looks like a nice golden bottom. Um, so I just sort of set it up there like that to cool. And I'll do the other one. Um, oh, weird. The same thing happened on the end over here. That's funny. I don't know what that is. Anyway. So that one's all ready too, and it's definitely much smaller, but it's still a cute little loaf of bread and it works. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and just let this cool for as long as I can keep them cooling before somebody insists on cutting into them. So <laughs> I'll bring you back when it is time to cut into them. All right, it's time. So I'm going to be cutting the smaller loaf just because um, you know, it's, it's probably cooler than the larger one. It's this one. Yeah. This one definitely still feels warm. This one maybe isn't hundred percent cool, but it's, it's mostly cool. Like it's almost completely there. You can see the crackling in the crust. At least I think you can. I don't know. Doesn't it look amazing. Oh my gosh. It looks fantastic. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and chop off a source of fights in my house is who gets the end piece. <laughs> Not real fights, but you know what I'm saying. Anyway, I will let my son have that. Um, I'm going to cut off one more piece so that we can get some eyes on the structure inside. And there you have it. So even though it was so little, <laughs> like it's still, you know, fluffy and wonderful. That is one thing I will say about this bread is it is super fluffy. Um, and then the crust is super crispy. So um, thicker slices can be good. Or if after the bread is 100% cool and you're confident that it's fully cool, you can slip the loaf into some kind of baggy, um, like a gallon size Ziploc bag, or I don't know, like that bag that I, I had the dough rise in. And then after it has sat in the bag for a little while, the crust will soften up a bit and then you'll be able to get some pretty good slices that way. 
but man, we love this crispy crust. So the first loaf is going to disappear today. <laughs> Everybody is going to eat it um, and just show no mercy on this loaf. Uh, but um, it'll last pretty well. We'll have some sandwiches. We'll have it with soup. And then uh, probably I'll be ending up making more bread tomorrow, which maybe I'll film. Uh, adding some extra whole wheat flour in this and you can see some of the variations and how that turns out. It's just so gorgeous. Will you do it? Will you do it? Do it. I'm like here. There you go. And yeah, it just looks amazing. It's fantastic. But of course, it is very easy to make a good white bread. So anyway, hopefully you enjoyed that and you got something good out of it. Picked up some good tips. Um, and yeah, you have something in your arsenal now for using up some of that all-purpose flour if you do have a bunch stored up. And as always, I hope the rest of your day is good and your life stays wonderful. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Bye. All right, this is this is a bit serious. I'm not sure that we should have this shot here. All right.